Hello everyone, my name is Sweet Taffy and welcome back to Block Ramble. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about ice. Now, ice is a pretty difficult block to work with simply because, you know, just about every light source in the game causes it to melt. So to uh, show some mercy upon myself, I've decided to include packed and blue ice to the mix. So it's just all the ice. As you can see, it's still kind of dark around here, but you know, we're working on it. <laughs> so as per usual, we are going to be looking at some specific block combinations that work really nice with ice, as well as some palettes and some builds based on those palettes. So I'd like to preface this part by saying that I think ice is a very picky block to work with, or I don't know, maybe I'm the picky one, but I had a bit of a hard time finding blocks that I liked using with ice, but I think I've done all right here. One of the biggest things that I noticed is that ice works really well with the uh, cool neutral colors, which is why we're starting off with Deep Slate. So Deep Slate, of course, is, you know, a dark gray color, but it's also got a little hint of sort of a bluish tone to it. I find that ice really pops when you use it with Deep Slate, because, like, it's such a... It looks so bright next to the Deep Slate. So I think, you know, ice works as a really good sort of accent block when you're working on a build that's like largely deep slate would work really really nicely just peeking out between deep slate blocks and uh, we'll be seeing how they work together in one of the upcoming builds up next we have spruce now I try to find at least one type of wood that works well with the block that I'm focusing on for my rambles and I decided to use spruce because, you know, it makes sense. You find spruce in colder biomes, and you find ice in colder biomes, so it's something that you'd probably be using in the same build in a survival world. And I just think that, like, of all the woods, spruce kind of works the best. I found that a lot of the other woods were just kind of too bright or too colorful, or, like, just worked a little too hard against the ice, sort of. Especially uh, the acacia and the netherwoods. They were just a lot compared to the ice, so... Yeah. Spruce will be playing a big part in... almost all of my uh, builds. I think one of them I use a different kind of wood, but uh, you'll see later on. So third up we have stone and stone brick and a little bit of andesite because they all work together very nicely. Uh, so stone again one of those cool neutral colors and I find that it also really brings the color out in ice and uh, I think it in particular I think it like makes really nice borders around say ice floors which is, again, something, you know, that comes up in a lot of my builds. I think ice makes a really fun floor, especially when you're, like, running around because you kind of slip a little. <laughs> and, I mean, who doesn't like turning their living room into an ice rink, right? Maybe it's just me. Not that I can actually skate in real life, but, you know, a girl can dream. Fourth up, we have clay blocks, and I actually really like these two together. There's a lot of blue in the texturing for the gray blocks, so it kind of, it really works in a, if you're making a gradient where you're transitioning from, say, stone to ice, it's just like a nice little in-between block to kind of soften the difference. They also kind of have, like, so the clay looks a lot busier than, say, the normal ice, although there is actually a lot going on in the texture for the normal ice. But when you get to the packed and blue ice, you know, there's quite a bit of noise in those two. 
And yeah, I just, I really like using clay and the uh, ice together. So for these picks, I really tried to find like a colored block besides just a wood type and some neutral colors. I tried to find like something other than gray or black or white that would go nice with ice. And I found that I really liked the blue terracotta. It's like a weird shade of blue that when you, it, it doesn't really look blue normally, but especially when you put it next to something that actually is blue, like the ice, it really looks purple. And it's a nice shade of purple. It's not like bright like the purple or the cement or amethyst. Like it's just a nice dark purple color. And I think they, you know, play together well enough. It's just a nice little change from the bleh. <laughs> and finally, we have quartz. Now, ice being what it is, it of course looks nice with white, because, you know, snow. And uh, since, you know, the snow block doesn't have a lot of, you know, slabs or stair options, although you can pile up layers of snow to make slabs, it's uh, nice to have something that you can, like, shape better, like quartz. And, uh, even though quartz is kind of more of a cream color than, like, an actual white, I do like the fact that there's, like, all sorts of varying, like, patterns to it. And honestly, I just love quartz in general, and if I can make it work with something, then, like, you know, I'll definitely do it. Even if it is kind of an expensive block to build with in survival. And, but, uh, you know, I think it's worth it. It's just so pretty, especially, especially the, like, the, the chisel, I think. Yeah. Especially the chisel. That's my favorite one. <laughs> and, uh, that's it for our, uh, special combos, and now let's move on to the palettes. And then we can get to the fun stuff. So, for this first palette, I decided to do something a little different. Normally, I focus on buildings, but I decided to try my hand at, you know, terraforming something to kind of make a little bit of a winter wonderland. So, for this one, I'm using packed ice, normal ice, tough, clay, calcite, stone, rooted dirt, snow, and spruce wood. And I really like how it turned out. So over here we of course have the, you know, a little bit of the frozen pond with some custom trees that I did. They're a little wonky and fun, but I really like irregular growing trees in real life. You know, it kind of tells a story and I kind of tried to make it look like they're weighed down by the snow. But anyways, it uh, looks better from, you know, a higher angle of course, but you can kind of see how we've got uh, you know, ice with a little bit of, uh, packed ice in the middle to kind of say this is, like, more permanently cold, and it kind of thaws as it gets closer to the edges, and then we kind of have a bit of transition from, like, pond area using the tuff and clay, and a little bit of cobblestone, and kind of transitioning to calcite, which is, like, slushy snow or you know, just dirty snow, to actual snow. And uh, this, I, I really like rooted dirt because it kind of reminds me of, like, just dead grass in winter, and, you know, you add a bit of tall grass, and you've got kind of a cattails-ish look. And, like, those don't always die when winter hits. They just kind of stick around. They don't, like, decay. It just sticks out of the snow. Yeah, I uh, discovered in my struggle to make basically all of my builds that just about every light source uh, melts ice, including sea pickles. Uh, obviously this one's just one deep, so I couldn't put ice over it anyway, but uh, yeah, sea pickles melt ice, um, as do, you know, torches, lanterns sea lanterns, campfires, but the one thing that doesn't melt ice, and I mean, even glowberries do, 
but glow lichen. This stuff right here is like the savior of all my builds. And as the sun sets, we're going to see like a good example of it. This place actually looks really magical at night. Uh, but yeah, then I just did a whole lot of layers of snow to kind of make more natural looking hills. I kind of wish we could do this with like more blocks just because it looks really good. And it's a little less like startling than normally when you just put two like a nice gradual hill using dirt. It's still kind of jumpy but this is a little smoother. You go up it a lot smoother. And I kind of, I've used the lichen here to sort of mimic like the grass is growing through the snow, but it's still not quite just grass. And it provides like a nice border to say this is the end of the terraforming area. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it just adds like a nice soft glow. There are still like some spots that I'm sure monsters can spawn, but I don't know, it's just... There's something kind of magical about it. I even managed to hide glow lichen in the trees, which I mean makes sense because it's lichen, and of course lichen grows on trees. And yeah, I'm actually really proud of these trees. I don't terraform very often. It's something that I need to work on, but I think I did really well here. So for this next palette, uh. The build that I use it for is probably my least favorite of the four that I did. I just had a lot of trouble kind of translating what my imagination was making and what blocks are capable of, and I just had a real hard time like making a full palette using nine blocks like I do for everything else. Honestly, I probably would have just left this at like quartz ice and maybe the blue terracotta, but you know, I kind of like to challenge myself to fit my palette into nine, or to stretch my palette into nine, whatever it happens to be. I don't always manage to fit it into nine. I really like my blocks. But, uh, yeah. So this time around, we've got Mushroom Stem, Quartz Pillar, Blue Packed and Normal Ice. We've got some Birch Wood, some Blue Terracotta, Snow, and Blue Stained Glass. And, uh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> Let's, uh, take a closer look, I guess. I think this is another build where if I had made it on a bigger scale, it would probably look more impressive than it is. Uh, but this is, uh, what we have. I'm kind of trying to limit how much time I spend preparing these videos. And, uh... So this, this, this is what we have to work with. So I made some tiny little, like, custom sort of topiary type trees. They're very cartoonish, I think, compared to what I did over there. But I still really like them. It's literally just snow on top of birch fences. With, again, some glow lichen up top. It kind of like, it, it's a bit like leaves poking through the snow but it also provides a little bit of light for the area. And I've got these going all the way around the build. We've got a little bit of a path with the uh, quartz pillars. Uh, I did kind of break away from just using the quartz pillars, of course, because that would be very ugly, probably. <laughs> so we've got um, some stairs and slabs and things, but also the chiseled stuff up here. And I tried to kind of tell a story with this one, I'm not sure how well it comes across, but I was thinking it was some sort of, like, water temple that's frozen over, and sort of been left to rot. So I used, you know, ice and stained glass panes to sort of make these, like, dripping icicles, as well as uh, covering up sea lanterns with the, um, glass because of course the glass doesn't melt and the blue impact ice doesn't melt when it's close to actual uh, light sources while the ice up here would if it was uh, much lower 
they took like a lot of uh, placing blocks and removing them every time they melted to kind of figure out, okay, this is how far I can go from it, from light sources, but uh, yeah. So there's a bit of a snowflake pattern in the floor, I thought that was kind of fun. It sort of gets hidden now that the, when I put the middle pillar in, but uh, from the outside it's sort of this, this like tiered set of rings. It's almost like a giant fountain really that's been frozen over. And I kind of tried to make it look like as it as the water froze it sort of expanded and it's broken through. Again, it's uh, not my favorite build, but, you know, and in some places the pillars have been destroyed and are sort of or coated in ice. Um, I used the mushroom stem to kind of make it look like maybe the pillars are rotting somehow, or just crumbling a lot, or they've been worn down. Uh, here, one of the pillars has actually fallen. Again, I think if I'd made this like a lot bigger, maybe kind of stretched out the walkway here and made a bigger variance in the height for the rings and, you know, push them a little further apart, I do think this would have looked really cool. I might try it again someday. But, uh, yeah. And of course I used a lot of glow lichen to uh, light the place up and lots of glass panes to kind of mimic like, you know, the weird irregular shape that icicles make. Uh, some of them, you know, touch the floor, some of them kind of merge the bigger ice, icicle drip things together. And like, I don't hate it, hate it, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement here. So for our third palette, um, I really like this one, it's kind of cute, but so we've got um, ice, packed blue ice, we've got our stone bricks and our spruce, we've got snow, a couple colors of wool, and some light blue cement powder. And it's raining. And, uh, yeah. Of course, I end up making a cute little cottage build in each of these episodes. Uh, uh oh yeah, I, um, already started working on the next one, guys. <laughs> but, yeah. So we come in here, we've got, um, a basalt little entryway. It kind of reminds me of, like, old asphalt. Uh, so we've got our snow walls, and of course snow blocks don't melt when they're next to light sources, but, uh, the little layers of snow do, which I think is kind of weird, but, you know. So I kind of had to use a mix of snow blocks and snow layers to kind of cover the ground a little here. And we come in here, and the floor is a mix of ice, uh, Blue ice, a little bit of uh, stained glass, and a lot of carpeting. I kind of tried to mimic like a bear rug type thing under the bed here. Uh, put the storage up there. A little sitting area with some books. And your little dining area. Enchanting setup. Furnace. Put everything up high so it won't melt the floor. <laughs> uh, yeah. And some workstations sitting back here as well. And like I said, it's just a cute little, cute little cottage. I like to do the whole, uh, fence upper layer just to let in some natural light during the daytime. 
because I didn't want to like spam windows all over the walls. And where there are windows, I've given them little dark look shutters. Uh, again, we've got the stone brick bordering the ice floor. You can kind. I'll show you inside. You can kind of see the stone through the ice in some places. And right here, you can kind of see it, and I just I like that little detail. And of course, through the glass, you can see it. And I've just done it all over a layer of snow. And I tried to do a little bit of uh, texturing in the roof, which is, of course, the blue and packed ice. I think this is, like, a really cute idea for a roof. I just... I like colorful... I, I, I just really like colorful roofs. If I had a house of my own, I, you know... I would love to have just that, like, ridiculously colorful house on the street that, like, everybody hates. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I did a couple uh, little icicles using a white uh, paint, white stained glass panes. There wasn't a lot of places where I could put it, just because it would like merge with the wall or, you know, it's not a full block, so it won't sit nice. But, uh, yeah, my two little icicles. Oh, I've got a couple, you know, just a couple icicles here and there. And of course, glow lichen. I, I have a newfound appreciation for this stuff. Alright, so for our final palette for uh, that bad boy over there, we've used just about all of the uh, blocks that I talked about earlier in the previous room, except for quartz, but I did use a number of other blocks for texturing, but uh, mainly we're focusing on the blue terracotta, a couple of variations of deep slate, we've got the three ices, and we've got uh, stone bricks, we've got clay and spruce. Uh, so. I'll kind of work my way around here and then lead you up, because of course we've got a whole tower here, and I'm actually really proud of this. It's like, ah, uh, I just, I, I, I love this build, guys. So from the outside, we did the same sort of thing that I did with the pond, with uh, the tall grass working as reeds on top of the rooted dirt. And we've got, you know, texturing using the basalt with the deep slate. And of course, glow lichen for lighting, as uh, there are some torches and candles and uh, lanterns around on the outside, because there's not so much ice out here, at least on the lower levels. But uh, this is another one where I tried to tell a bit of a story, so you can kind of see there's water leaking from the inside. And it's, you know, made a bit of a pond here, but if we go in down here, I made this sort of uh, storage area slash, I guess, library wine cellar type thing. But if you look closely, it looks more like it used to be a dungeon until it got flooded. And I used, like, stairs here to kind of imply that it did go deeper before it was flooded, but now it is what it is. And I like that you can kind of, like, look outside through the ice floor again. And, uh, yeah, this would be the storage room for this build if you were to, you know, live in it. And you don't have to go all the way up to get access to the stuff. And we go up here, we've got our first floor, which is made of clay, but I also use smooth stone and cement powder. And it's a wonky little shape, like the entire tower is kind of wonky and I love it. But uh, yeah, you come inside. You know, we've got an, a lot of our workstations down here. A little bit of storage, some armor stands, 
windows a little bit of a seating area sort of a kitchen area as well but yep, and a great look at the spoiler wall I can't tell you what's behind it because you know spoilers and I specifically built this so you couldn't see over the wall because yeah I am um, originally intended to do that episode before this one but you know ice was requested and I had to do it so I did a little, tiny little bit of decoration. I was gonna put glowberries in, but I found out that those produce heat, apparently, and it started melting my tower. So we, once you get up here, it's a bit better because, you know, the packed in blue ice doesn't melt, unlike normal ice. Yeah, so there's a bit of a gradient. As we go up, 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 it gets colder. Spore blossom for atmosphere. Oop. <laughs> up the spiral stair and then we start adding more decorations to the sort of ledge here a little bit of barrel action and now we're in an upstairs bedroom area where I, I really love this room so it's your enchanting setup it's also your bedroom there's a tiny bit of storage and uh, funky views Again, there's no windows pointing in that direction because I didn't want to spoil too much for the next episode. But, uh, yeah. I, uh, you know, I tried to figure out what could I use to texture the blue terracotta, and surprisingly, the warp logs, I think, given the whole magical atmosphere with, like, the enchanted enchanting table and the dragon skulls and everything it sort of gives off this and and the amethyst it sort of gives off this wizardy tower feel and i don't know the glowing pulsing vine thing kind of works and the uh, glow lichen sort of softens it if i were to step outside here careful not to show anything. So you can see I kind of used the uh, glow lichen to soften it a little bit from the outside. Um, I absolutely adore the roof for this because it's just that slightest bit wonky. So like it honestly the entire tower sort of looks like it's like leaning slightly. But especially like this area here where it dips down a little on this side and raises up a little on that side. And I've used some like trap doors and things to make it look a little bit ricketier. And yeah, I just... I love this tower so much. And this boar blossoms, it's just... I love this thing, guys. And uh, that about wraps it up for today's episode, guys. Uh, this was requested by someone in the comments from my last video. And if anyone else has any uh, requests, if you want to see specific blocks, or if you want to see build tutorials for any of the things I've done in this episode, let me know, and I'll see what I can do. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe, comment if you've got any complaints or anything let me know too i'm happy for feedback and uh yeah i'll uh see you guys next time bye bye